level we've just spent the last couple of weeks trekking around <clears throat> Byfield National Park and then we came home to do some stuff around Mackay but unfortunately the weather was pretty ordinary so we um, ventured out west a little bit but um, a lot of you might remember Tony's uh, Navara D22 what year model is it? 06? 2006 yeah 2006 in the Cape York videos towed the poor old Luxy 90 kilometers into Bamaga once I put the bloody radiator fan into the radiator so um, she's a pretty good weapon but uh, Tony's been setting it up for their big uh, adventure around Australia on indefinite leave and um, just thought <coughs> while he's here we've got a couple of days down time now until they go and um, might go around his car and see what he's done to it improvements he's made and how he's set it up to uh, pull this bloody caravan of his, this house on wheels and um, basically set it up to be fully self-sufficient so yeah, might uh, get into it but we might finish these uh, whiskies first Right, Tim, we'll have a look in the back here so as you can see there's still some, <laughs> there's still some Cape York dust Renee didn't, uh, Renee didn't detail it mate yeah, she, she made the big promise while we are up north, <laughs> eh, but, um... Didn't come yeah. through for goods. <laughs> There's actually a fair bit of dust in your canopy, now that I'm looking. There's a lot, actually. Depends why nothing else That's is going to go in. Tony said Renee's going to clean it when they get home, though. Yeah, well, I'll detail it. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. I just got on camera saying she's going to detail the car when he gets home. Oh, uh, she will. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, that, that, that dust just gets everywhere. It does. You know, I think she spent probably a whole weekend giving the whole car a bit of a detail, but yeah, as you wash it and as it as it goes, it's pretty um, how you going, eh? Yeah, it comes out, eh? Keeps coming out of Luxy too every time I wash it. Yeah. But anyway, show us how you've set it up, mate, because uh, it's a little bit different to the Cape York trip. You're not totally self-sufficient on the vehicle anymore. No. So it's probably freed up some space to get some more, I don't know, essential items, I guess. Yeah, it's been a bit of a thought process. Um, obviously, we're towing a van that you'll probably see in the background there, so we're not as reliant on the vehicle in terms of being, you know, the one and only thing that, that we have. So we don't have to carry as much in the car as we did when we went to the Cape and a few of the other trips, but um, yeah, still gonna look after it because it's, you know, if this breaks down, we don't go anywhere. Yeah, so. that's it. Yeah, got the drawers in there, which I had in there up on the Cape trip. So this side, it's a bit of a mess, but a bit of recovery gear on the front and uh, tools in the back there. So hopefully I won't need any of these, nah. but um, I'll probably take I've probably got too many tools, but what do you do? Yeah, you don't know what you're going to be up against, really. Yeah, you'd rather have um, too many tools and not break down than break down and not have, you know, a grinder or two 12 inches or something. Yeah, that's I don't it. know. So, yeah, that's, that's this side. Draw one. And draw two is first half is fishing gear. Nothing but fishing gear. So, lures, extra reels. Um, and I think there's a sneaky reel or two in the back section of the drawer as well. Uh, got my fire to fork knife oh, there, there you as go. well. That's a pretty fancy knife too, isn't it? Yeah, man. Haven't used it yet. So it's, uh, it's all carbon steel. Yeah. Bit of a, a cleaver, if you if you will. So that'll get a bit of a bit of workout. Very good. Um, and in the back there, just got a battery charger for the battery in the vehicle. So, you know, a proper uh, um, AC charger. Yep. And a few more bits and pieces. Got my grease gun, hammer, LED light, more mozzie coils and, and so on. <clears throat> Before we left, mum made some canvas bags for us. Oh, very good. What's she got for so, you? Tool, tool roll? Yeah, tool roll. Um, just had a real heavy calico, so yeah. I've got two in the van there, temp pegs and all that sort of stuff in it, so they always come in handy. So that's the drawers. Um, Still running this MSA, whatever it is? Yeah, the MSA, MSA drop MSA. slide. The 65 litre dual zone uh, Waco. So this thing's a beauty, eh? I've had it for, I don't know, maybe 
eight or nine years now. Yeah, that right. thing just has not let me down. It's a pearl of a fridge. Around on this side, basically just got a couple of camp chairs, fold out uh, table that we just pull out. So they're easy access just in and out. Down on this side here, we've got axe, um, compressor. compressor. Um, there's a bottle jack in there. There's a couple of other bits and pieces. Extra pole for the, the awning, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah. Um, and then down the front, we've got chainsaw as well. Yeah, right. So. All the essential camp gear, all in the back of the, uh, yeah, back yeah. of the nav. One of the other things Tone's done is like fully rejig his 12 volt system. He's done it all himself. Kind of makes my efforts look quite uh, ordinary. <laughs> but anyway, step us through what you've done here, Tone, because it's uh, quite elaborate looking. Yeah, I um, I sort of wanted a bit of a project, really. You know, I like doing wiring at home and. Uh, I like sort of tinkering around on this sort of stuff here, but um, when we went to the Cape last year, I um, had a a, um, a charger in the system. Uh, it wasn't this unit here; it was just a, a, a CTEC unit. Had the inverter, um, and that was basically it. But we sw switched over to a lithium battery, so we had a 100 amp hour lithium battery down the bottom there. So we had to change the charger. So I've gone with the Enerdrive. Um, it's got a built-in solar rag, so MPPT, um, does all battery chemistry, so lithium, AGM, calcium and stuff. So yeah, it was a bit of a project, made this out of um, some marine ply, just cut it to, to size. Um, and basically, battery on the bottom, charger, inverter, a um, couple of sockets here, so you got a uh, cigarette and twin USB. Um, Anderson plug here is solar input from the roof and this Anderson plug here powers the fridge um, All fuses in here so each input into the charger runs through its own fuse uh, and then this fuse block here is for The yeah, cigarette right. and the and the twin USB and then down here I've got um, another couple of outlets uh, here as well, which is all fused um, but this unit here is basically run off the inverter. Yep. So charge it for my tools and then whatever else I need. So if I want to charge my laptop or you know something similar, I can just plug it in there. Good. Then away we go. But yeah, I've got the ePro Plus uh, battery monitor, uh, which is re related to the to the shunt there. So that monitors everything that's going in and coming out of the battery. Um, gives me all of the all of the specs up on the screen, so you've just got to scroll through. Gives you any sort of detail that that you're after, really. It took me a while to do it, but um, yeah, I'm pretty pretty happy with it. It hasn't pretty, let me down so far. So it's pretty impressive looking too. I mean, far out. Yeah. Anyone anyway, um, think you're a Sparky tone? Auto oh, Sparky. <laughs> mate, just um, just through work, you know, you learn learn from the fitters and. Yeah. And how how they do things, so you know it's just um yeah just picked it up on the fly really yeah nice um, but as I said it took me quite a while quite a yeah. number of weekends it was so. saved you saved you a fair bit of coin oh yeah mate yeah hey. um yeah you know like this sort of system installed you're looking probably about two and a half three grand yeah right um, there you go so yeah and, I was how, and probably how much for you just to buy it or you reckon roughly thereabouts kind of cost oh mate you know like that that battery retail at the time that that we bought them I yeah think that i've got the same one in the luxie yeah i think they were about 1400 bucks yeah. retail at the time um this thing here i think is about 900 bucks yeah um that that retail is about 600 bucks yeah um and the, you know you're talking you know cable per meter yeah is expensive so and then you got labor to have it installed as well yeah. so you'd be looking probably six seven hundred dollars labor yeah so yeah uh, very good pretty happy with it um and as tim was saying um over the last couple of weeks going through byfield and the other few campsites that that we've been to um we've had some pretty ordinary days um sun wise yeah. and uh um, mate she hasn't dropped below 13.4 volts running yeah, the nice. freezer the entire time so yeah very pretty happy good. with it Oh, there's um, solar up on the roof, so the 110 watts of solar. Oh yeah, you did that on the up on the roof, which you would have seen on the Cape trip, yeah. 
So Tony had this mad idea at Cape York uh, with his solar panels here. He's made like a little uh, draw system kind of setup, so it just slides out. So yeah, just give that a whirl, Tone, and I'll chuck it up so everyone can see. Yeah, so you just got some alley angle, made my own brackets down on the bottom there. And um, all I do basically, I've just got a little M6 bolt, which I unscrew when needed, and I just pull the panel out. Yeah. Over the roof. She charges, so whenever we pull into camp, if needed, I can pull it out. Uh, but while, while we're driving the battery, uh, from the front, the, the alternator obviously charges through to the back. Yeah, yeah. But if we're parked up and we're having lunch at a pub or something, you know, this still gets a fair bit of solar. Uh, but pulling it out, obviously, you know, it's in full sun, it's running easy. all the way through. Yeah, so it's, um, it's actually worked well, very well. Yeah, good. So, what about on the roof rack tone? Oh, mate, I've got um, a gas bottle for barbecues when we're away from the van. Uh, I've got two sets of max tracks on the other side there um, shovel on the other side on a shovel holder uh, what else is up there uh, fishing rods and um, the the Darchi Eclipse 270 so that swings all the way around and then there's a section that swings around the front so when we're out on the beach we've got full coverage on the side and around the back of the vehicle as well yeah right. Yeah, I forgot there's uh, two more uh, jerry cans up on the top there as well so. So yeah, those good old front runners, they're like, they're the best water jerry I reckon is on the market and mainly because of those, um, those recessed uh, taps, not going to get damaged, eh? Yeah, I reckon it's a pretty good design. Yeah. Well, show us what you've done in this back seat, Tone, because it's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. Last time Tone just had some drawers there, some like little plastic drawers, but he's got on the uh, fabrication, I might jump in the other side. Tone's just got his carpentry skills on. <laughs> yeah, before we left, we um, we just had a normal, a normal back seat. Um, I pulled it out before the Cape trip, uh, which worked very, very well. But um, yeah, on this trip, we needed something a little bit more, so a bit more storage. So um, yeah, we ripped out what we had, and we built this uh, set of drawers here. So um, got the same backing board, just put everything in carpet again. Um, but Tim will show you on that side. I've got a drawer coming out on both sides. So just easy that. <clears throat> Couple of uh, snake kits and first aid kit and a bunch of uh, notebooks and stuff. Yeah. And, That's um, nice and it feels good too, eh? Yeah, full drawer runners, man. Beautiful. Um, just on your right hand side, we've got another couple of power outlets as well, so. Yep. If we need to charge anything while we're while we're driving, it's easily done there. And uh, the little piece that we love the most is um, while we're driving, we've got a little snack box here, yeah, so we right. we can lift that up. We have little snacks in there, whatever drinks, etc. But um, that's pretty deep too, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's it's something that um, we thought of because. The doors don't open all the way. You can't obviously have a drawer that pulls all the way out. Yeah. So the drawers can really only come out about 300 mil. So there's a lot of wasted space here. So we thought we'd have that little cavity. Um, and then on the front, the front section of the drawers, we've got a little lip. I don't know if you can see that uh, on the bottom there, but we generally have our water bottles. Oh, yeah, one sits ledge. there and the other one sits here, yep. um, which is pretty handy access from the front yeah. wall while we're driving as well. I reckon that's brilliant, mate. So, you don't need four seats, but there's no. just so much space in here when you take them out. Yeah. And having a seat in there is good, but you can't really, it's really hard to pack and store things on there yeah. because of the way the seat's shaped. So, oh, oh, actually, this is actually lifted up about, oh, about 200 mil. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, so we can actually store things underneath the entire width of the floor as well. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so. No, that's brilliant. Yeah, it's working out well for us so far. And you got a couple of gauges in down the front there, Tony? <coughs> yeah, so the top gauge is uh, Boost and EGT. Yeah. And the, the gauge on the bottom is water temp. So everyone knows the, the Nissan factory water temp gauge just goes up to one position and does not move. 
Um, so yeah, a couple of SAS gauges uh, put in before we left. Um, it's the thing driving with a, with a diesel, especially this being the three liter uh, common rail, uh, sorry, direct injection, not common rail. Um, you really, really got to keep an eye on the EGTs and the water temp. So, yeah, right. Yeah. Especially when I'm pulling this van now, eh? Oh, mate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We both know that that's uh, the first couple of times pulling something is uh, quite an eye opener, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it is, mate. Um, Jesus, and it's uh, well, yeah. this thing can pull a lot more than the old Luxie, but uh, but yeah, it's just you know, same, same. It's yeah. just like you know, really opens your eyes. You're basically well, we cut out about eighty to, or you know, on a bad day, hundred kilometres of uh, fuel range. Mm. What do you reckon you've done? About the same. A little bit less, probably. I reckon a bit more, eh? I, a bit more? I, yeah, I, I reckon I've dropped maybe 140 a tank. Holy shit. Um, so I was getting about about 620 yeah. out of a tank prior. Now I'm getting about, oh, no, no, it'd be about 100. So, yeah, I'm, I'm getting about 430 out of a tank. No, what's that? Yeah, it's 200. Yeah, 200. Shit. What um, what size tank is this, but it'd be a lot more than the Luxie? It's probably only a 75, oh, yeah. 78 litre. Yeah. Um, well, Luxie's only got 66, but yeah, look, only about 10 more is not much, really. Yeah, yeah, so. But, um, yeah, the old direct injection, three litres, um, yeah, there's not too much power there, so it's a bit of a slow trip around Australia so what far. What have, um, have you done? Anything? You've done something with performance, so you've chipped it up or something? Yeah, I put a uni chip in it before we left. Yeah. Um, just to give me a little bit more more grunt, I guess, to, to pull the van. Um, so yeah, I've got five, five different maps, um, Bluetooth onto my phone. Yep. I can change on the fly. Oh, good. Um, and one of them is an immobilizer as well. So if we park up anywhere and we want to go for a walk, you know, for the day, I can just hit the immobilizer. Shut it down. And the car just won't won't start, so. Oh, that's all right. Um, but yeah, ha having those gauges is is a godsend, eh? Yeah, right. Tane's gone and got some uh, some matte black bonnet happening. What was the reason behind that, Tane? <clears throat> well, the the clear coat on the paint had started to break up a little bit on the bonnet and on the roof. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, just sort of thought while we're travelling around Australia, hitting hitting the harsh sun. We um, took the opportunity. Renee's brother is a sign writer back in Caboolture. So we got a vinyl wrap on the bonnet and on the roof and then on the bottom of the doors as well just to protect the paint. So, um, yeah, see how it goes. Should be good for about two years, huh? Yeah, I reckon so. Just keep it clean. I'd yeah. rather have that. I mean, yeah, it's a small yeah. price to pay than having the whole, you know, clear coat start to, to pull off which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Yeah. Alright so another alteration I did before we left home needed a new set of tyres so um, considering the amount of uh, driving that we're going to be doing on the blacktop um, you know touring Australia I thought it would have been safer to go with a, an all-terrain uh, rather than a full-on mud um, so decided to go with the Mickey Thompson um, ATZ P3s they're a bit of a hybrid um, between an all-terrain and a mud, so a bit more of an aggressive all-terrain, fairly decent sidewall on them. Um, 265, 75-16s, and I've done roughly about 1700 Ks in them so far. Um, can't really comment on, on 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 how they're going, but they they're heaps quieter than than the than the muds I had on. Um, haven't really done a lot of driving in the wet. Um, so I can't really say there, but they're not as blocky. Uh, there's a lot more sipes in them as well, so they're obviously going to be better in the wet. Um, the tyres I had on here with, with the Nitto Trail Grapplers uh, in the same size, I've taken those off here and I've put them on the van. So um, I've got mud tyres on the van um, and the new Mickeys on here. So same stud pattern, so I should be able to... I've got two spare tyres on the van and one spare on the on the vehicle so if I do run into a, a bit of a sticky spot I should That's be able right, to swatch the, the wheels around yeah. That's brilliant. Um, but I'll, I'll, instead of just replacing the four I'll put five brand new tyres on this so the spares are brand new um, uh, Mickey Thompson yeah, as right. well. So, yeah. Set. Yeah. Rode the, we'd have had to do something with suspension to tow the bloody van or what? Yeah um, 
I changed the the springs in the back so the the shocks were still pretty good because um, I put them in just before we went to the Cape which was only about 80 months ago yeah. um, and I checked them out there's no leaks there they're all, they're all good the bushes are okay so I just changed the leaves put a new leaf pack in the back um, 500 kilo constant load um, from EFS yeah so yeah. Um, so far with the load in the back and the ball weight of the van um, they're going very very well what is only, the ball weight of the van? oh they reckon about 160 oh yeah um, but yeah, obviously that, that changes when you load up your box and have your gas bottle and yeah, right. et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a gray figure, but, um, your car's handling it well so far. Oh, good. Well, yeah, that's about, uh, that's about all there is to say about Tony's, uh, D22. It's been, um, yeah, well, I'd, I'd say pretty substantially upgraded or rethought about, uh, as they head off around this, uh, beautiful country of ours, seeing all the beautiful sights and magic uh, spots. So um, yeah, hopefully, I oh, know she will be a pretty good rig for you, but um, hopefully she uh, does, does what it's intended to do for you. <laughs> and there's no uh, major dramas, yeah, but uh, I'm sure it'll, be, sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I think it'll be all right, you know, just, just drive to the conditions and you know, you don't have to get from A to B. Yeah, that's it, eh? As fast as you can, so yeah, we'll, um, yeah. Be sure to post a lot of photos, man. Yeah, man. All right, we'll blend it there and uh, we'll go have a look at his van. <laughs>